EC201 lecture 21. Yesterday we looked at how we make an incremental current controlled current source. That's where we stopped yesterday. And we came up with what is commonly known as the common gate amplifier where one way of realizing it is to bias the gate at a constant potential by a string of resistors for example use an infinite capacitor here and we saw that if an incremental current I in was injected here then the total current in the drain is given by I ref plus I out where I out is the same as I in and this happens regardless of the regardless of the GM of the device. However, if GM tends to infinity, then what did we see? That the Z in, that is the input impedance looking in here, Z in becomes 0. So that this behaves like an ideal current control current source. Z out anyway is infinity. What conditions must be satisfied if Z out has to be infinity? And as long as M1 is in saturation. And M1 being saturation is trivial in this in this circuit diagram because the gate potential is lower than the drain potential. So, there is no way in which this transistor can be in any region other than saturation. Uh, can somebody tell me if this capacitor here is strictly necessary? No. Why? absolute current flowing through the, through the gate is zero. Since no current flows through the gate, the, if you draw the incremental circuit, this is what you have R A parallel R B going to the gate and this is the incremental input current. This is the incremental output current. Since no current flows through the gate, it follows that the voltage drop across RA parallel RB is 0, which means that whether you have the capacitor or not, the potential at the gate is incrementally ground. So, in this particular schematic, it is not strictly necessary to have the infinite capacitor from gate to ground. Does that make sense? In practice, however, it turns out that we will see this when we see MOSFET frequency response of these amplifiers that even though the DC current flowing through the gate is zero, there will be AC current flowing through the through the gate, and uh, in which case it becomes uh, mandatory to have some kind of capacitor between the gate and ground. But at this point in time, you can please note that it is not strictly necessary to have this capacitor at the gate. Rather, let, let's take a look at some simple variants of uh, the common gate. There's nothing to get perturbed about here. This is nothing but if you remove this part, what does it look like? I mean, common drain, and or if you look at this, in the common drain, we put the input at the gate, right? No, this is not common source. This is common gate, the same thing that we have seen, except that it is not drawn this way, alright, and the reason it is drawn this way is so that we are typically used to having the input on one side on the left and the output on the right, okay, whereas in yesterday's diagram the input was uh, you know coming up from below and the output was taken in the drain. This is just another way of drawing the same thing, so there is nothing to get confused about. Hmm? And there is another variant, instead of the supply going from VDD to 0, it is going from 0 to some negative value. That also is uh, nothing to be surprised about. And the third variant is that if uh, the GM of this transistor tends to infinity, then looking in between here and here, how does the incremental picture look like? What is this within these two brackets here? 
incrementally for incremental signals it is a current control current source if gm is infinity what is the input impedance we know that if gm is infinity the, the common gate stage behaves like an ideal current control current source and the input impedance of an ideal current control current source is zero for incremental signals this uh, the stuff within the green brackets looks like this if this current is i n okay we have now a current source i out where i out is equal to i n that's the equivalent of the stuff within the the green brackets does it make sense this is nothing but a current control current source with a gain of 1 the input impedance is 0 the output impedance is infinite and we see here that uh, the output port is connected also to incremental ground and what do we have what is the incremental equivalent circuit of this chap AVS and RS the capacitor becomes a short circuit. So, what can we can we make any comment about the ratio of incremental output voltage to V s? It is nothing but 1 by R s. Now, in practice, what did we see? G m cannot be made infinity. If G m is not infinity, what will be the change? Zn becomes equal to 1 over Gm, in which case, in which case what happens, what is I out by Vs? 1 over Rs plus 1 over Gm. Now, another way of looking at the same thing is to draw a Thevenin equivalent here. in which case this becomes an incremental current source of V s by R s this becomes R s let us call this chap I n we call this I s it is easiest hmm? I out by I s becomes what now if G m is infinity what happens to I out by I s come back to the old case g m is infinity. So, for g m tending to infinity what is i out by i s? 1. Why? Both terminals of the resistor are sitting at r s are at ground. So, this uh, there cannot be any current flowing through it. So, v s by r s actually flows into the transistor which uh, you know flows out. So, what is the utility of a current control current source? What is it doing? What is the current control current source doing for you? What we had here was a poor current source. Why is this a poor current source? What is the definition of a, uh, of a good current source? The current should not change if the voltage across it changes. And this is a poor current source because I mean the moment I increase the voltage across this, uh, this green over the current will change because of the finite output impedance R s. Now, th the current here is the same value as V s by R s, but with a difference. What is the difference? If you thought of this as your output, you can see that since the looking in impedance here is infinity. We see that whatever you do here, even if you put a resistance here, the current still remains the same. In other words, the current control current source has the utility that it can take a lousy current source and make it look like a ideal current. Does that make sense? Just like a voltage controlled voltage source 
will take a poor quality voltage source and make it look like a ideal voltage source. Why? Because the voltage control voltage source doesn't draw any current from the input. So, if you take this poor voltage source with a lot of internal impedance and make that the input to the voltage control voltage source, the voltage control voltage source will not load the source itself, but it will produce a voltage which is the same as the source voltage with zero output impedance. So, regardless of what load you put present at the output of the voltage control voltage source, the voltage will remain the same. So, in effect what you have done is take a poor quality voltage source and make it look like a ideal voltage source. This is the exact dual situation. You have taken a poor quality current source whose current would vary all over the place the moment you either put a load across it or you vary the voltage across it. We take this make this the input to a current controlled current source and an ideal current controlled current source is one which has zero input impedance. In other words, the input voltage of the current controlled current source is zero. So, there is no voltage drop across the internal impedance of the input current source. So, no current is lost through RS and all this current flows into the CCCS which is pushed out thanks to the way the circuit works, the output impedance is infinite which means that looking at this port, you can do whatever you want here, but the current will still remain equal to I n which is V s by R s. Does it make sense? So, in, in practice as I said, we, uh, we cannot have infinite G m, there is always some limit to the G m, but we generally agree that if the G m is large, the output current becomes equal to the input current if G m is sufficiently large. So, let us see what that large means. So, if G m is finite, what can you redo the calculation and tell me what I out by I s will be? This is nothing but a current divider. So, it is simply R s by R s plus 1 over G m which can be rewritten as G m R s by 1 plus G m R s. So, what in this context what do we mean by a large G m? A large G m means G m is much much larger than 1 over R s. Now, since we use the common gate fairly often, let uh, let me also work out. So, we have I s, we have R s, this is the incremental model. What you must do is in reality substitute an incremental model for this transistor and you have the output port. We know that in practice you cannot get an ideal MOSFET, the MOSFET always has we know that because of this channel length modulation, the output in the saturation region also, the, ma the MOSFET current in the drain is not quite independent of VDS. There is a small slope of uh, current versus the applied VDS and that basically means that the MOSFET is, uh, is modeled now as not just an ideal current source of the output, but a current source with a output resistance and how would I find the value of that output resistance? How would I determine the output impedance of the MOS transistor when it is in uh, saturation? Yeah, so, what all do I need? I need to find dou ID by dou VDS which means I need ID as well as lambda. So, if I replace the transistor with its incremental equivalent, what should I get here? This was the transistor. I am going to replace this by its incremental equivalent circuit. What is the incremental equivalent circuit of the transistor? This is the for incremental signals, this is the gate, okay. This is the the source and this is the current source between the gate and source 
and if the transistor has got a finite output impedance, there is also a output impedance R O. This is G M times V G minus. Please note that the incremental drain source current is related to the incremental gate source voltage. It is not related to the absolute potential of the gate. So this is incremental V G S. Okay. The gate is grounded. All that I am trying to do is uh, replace the MOSFET with its incremental equivalent circuit. All right. And this is the this is the gate. This is the source, and this is the drain. And all that I have to do is replace the transistor with this corresponding equivalent circuit. We need the the current source is between the drain and the source. The current source also has a finite output impedance R O. And if I call this incremental voltage uh, V S, then what must be the strength of this control source? This is G M times V G, which is zero minus V S. So, in other words, the circuit simplifies to I S R S minus G M V S can be redrawn as a current source of value G M V S flowing in the Opposite direction, and this is R. And we are interested in finding the input impedance gain and output impedance of this of this current control current source. So first, uh, let's uh, start with the input impedance. How would I find the input impedance? If I gave you a, a black box in the lab and said find the resistance, what will you do? You apply a voltage, measure uh, measure the current, or push in a current, measure the voltage. Okay. In this case, what do you think uh, will reduce the tedium of the algebra? So this is the equivalent thing. R O is connected to ground on this side. Okay. Please note. Huh? So R O is connected to ground. This is G M times V S. So now, can you tell me is it easier to apply voltage or apply a current? Apply a voltage. Why? One thing to understand is that when things all come together in parallel, it's always easy to apply a voltage because the currents are all. Add it together. It's very straightforward. Okay, it's easy to compute com conductance and then take the reciprocal to get the resistance. When branches all appear in series, it's always uh, easy to push in a current. So the same current flows through all the branches. You can find the voltage drop across each branch and add up all the voltage drops to get the total voltage uh, result in a computation of the resistance in a straightforward manner. So here we should the strategy should be to compute the input conductance. Find the resistance by taking the reciprocal of the conductance. As somebody pointed out, what is the input conductance? R not cannot appear in the. Uh, if I apply a voltage, V current flowing through here, V S by R not. What is the current flowing there? It's G M V S. So the total current flowing is G M V S plus V S by R not. Incremental conductance is nothing but G M plus one by. The next thing is to find the output impedance. And to find the output impedance, what should I do? I should deionize all the independent sources in the network. What are the what are all the independent sources in the network? I S. So what should I do? I should make I S an open circuit. So this becomes the G M V S V S, and I am trying to find the output impedance. Now, can you guess uh, what is the easier thing to do? Is it easier to apply a voltage and measure the current, or uh, or is it easier to pass a current and measure the voltage? 
it's easier to pass a current because you can see clearly that this branch is in series with this branch. Alright? So, to find the output impedance, I will take a small test current of say one, uh, some I and measure the voltage developed across the port which is V. Do V by I, I should get Z out. That makes sense? So, if I flows in here, what is the current flowing through RS? I. Okay, so by, is that clear? Because you can treat this as a black box, okay, two terminals. You push in I on one side, I must come out on the other side. So, if this current is I, what is Vs? Vs is nothing but I times Rs. So, what is Gm times Vs? Gm times Rs times I. We just now have established that Vs is Gm times Rs. This is RO. So, what is the current flowing through RO now? Which direction? It flows towards the left. This is I into 1 plus Gm RS. Okay? That's the current, which means that the voltage drop across the RO is This is the current, so the voltage must be I R O times 1 plus G M R S. So, what is the output impedance? The output voltage is nothing but I times R S plus I R O plus I R O times 1 plus G M R S. Okay? So, the output voltage is I R S plus I times RO times 1 plus GMRS. This divided by I will give me the output impedance. So, I can get rid of I throughout and get the following which is I can rewrite this as RS times 1 plus Gm RO plus this is the final expression. If RO tends to infinity, which is what you will have, you will get if you had a transistor without any channel length modulation or the lambda was 0, then the output impedance is infinity. Okay? This is what we expected in the first place. That makes sense. Okay? Because if RO is infinity, this uh, this chap here is not there. This guy would be an open circuit. Which means that you just have a current source looking back, which means that the output impedance is infinite. So, that makes sense. Okay? With a finite RO, what is happening? And this is not fundamentally important. Let us look at this chap. What do you observe? What is RS? Is the output impedance of the lousy current source that you had put in. And what is happening looking in at the output of the CCCS? We see that at the output of the current controlled current source, the output impedance of the of the input source itself, which was poor, it is multiplied by this quantity 1 plus GMR. So, in other words, the current controlled current source is taking a poor quality current source and making it look like a better one. And as RO tends to infinity, you notice clearly that uh, you can take any lousy current source. In fact, the output impedance of the current source can be very bad and still the output of the current controlled current source will, the output impedance of the current controlled current source will look like will be infinity, but as I said in practice it is uh, a MOSFET will always have a finite RO, which means that you can only hope that this GM RO number is high. A typical MOSFET in the good old days you, this GM RO you would be able to expect 100. If as channel lengths keep reducing, it turns out that this lambda factor becomes larger and larger and larger. For an ideal MOSFET without channel length modulation, lambda is 0. Hmm? But in a real MOSFET, lambda is finite. 
and in a short channel MOSFET, which is what is used to make uh, ICs these days, the lambda is actually terrible and you you'd be quite lucky to get even a GMR of between 10 and 15. Okay? But at least you see that if you had a poor current source, the moment you put it through this current control current source, the output impedance gets enhanced by roughly a factor equal to GM RO of the device. Does it make sense? In fact, we can do the same kind of evaluation, you know, put in finite RO and go and work out the details for all the control sources we have seen so far. The voltage control voltage source, the voltage uh, control current source. Uh, we have done this for the current control current source. I leave that the other calculations to you as an exercise. The bottom line, as I said, is that if you have a common gate stage like this, if this was RS and this had a GM and an RO, the looking in impedance here is approximately GM RO times RS. This approximation makes sense when GMRO is very large. If the GMRO is very large, you can neglect the one in, uh, in, a, in this expression and so this approximately becomes equal to 1 plus GMRO is approximately GMRO and GMRO times RS, if it is much larger than RO, then a reasonable approximation or a first cut approximation to the output impedance is that it is the output impedance of the original current source multiplied by GMR. Please note that now I am not going to go on working out the swing limits for the common uh, uh, gate and all that. It is all pretty straightforward. I have already discussed it for two cases. Whenever you want to find swing limits, you just find first, to, uh, first thing to do is obviously to find the operating point. Then you will be able to find the small signal equivalent for every nonlinear element in the network. Okay? So, in this case, we are dealing with MOSFET. So, you replace the transistor by its small signal equivalent circuit. You go and now you have a linear network. You solve the linear network and you will be able to find the incremental voltages at all nodes of the network and the incremental currents in all the branches of the network, which means that you are now in a position to find the total voltages and the total currents through all nonlinear devices. Then, you make the approximation that the total voltage and the total current remain equal to the quiescent value plus the incremental value even though the signal is not exactly small. And I showed you why this makes sense because it gives you a quick first order estimate of you know the limits of uh, beyond which the output of the amplifier will clip uh, so badly that it is useless. And uh, once you have made this approximation, to find out the limit of the input for which a given transistor goes into the cutoff region, you just have to equate the total drain current, which is the quiescent current plus the incremental current to 0. And to find the limit at which the transistor goes into the triode region, you have to find the, you have to equate the total drain current, uh, drain voltage minus Vt must be equal to the total gate voltage. The uh, amplitude which will result in that happening will give you the maximum amplitude which will, you know, send this particular transistor into the triode region. And the other limit we already found the maximum amplitude which will send this particular transistor into the cutoff region. The maximum input amplitude, sinus sinusoidal amplitude which will result in the output being clipped either at the top or the bottom is the minimum of these two limits. Now, if you have several transistors in the circuit, what will you do? In all our circuits, we had only, so far we have seen only one transistor. Now, if you have many such transistors, if you have a circuit with, as you know, we go along, we will be able to put many uh, uh, transistors in a single circuit, which means that, what, what will you do? You do it for, with experience, you will be able to figure out quickly which transistor is most likely to uh, limit your swing. But even if you do not know anything about how the circuit works, you should be able to follow this uh, straightforward procedure and do find the swing limit for the maximum amplitude for every transistor by using the, uh, the method I have just described. And now if you have many transistors, you will get a different limit for each transistor. So, what will you finally choose? You will choose the minimum uh, value. 
all the values you get for all the transistors. I think the